The Progress of Internet Through the Arab Spring, a presentation by Maddie, Danielle, Monty, and Clayton. Tunisia was the first of the three countries to protest their governments with the revolution beginning as long over the labor movement. Over time, President Ali restricted freedom of expression in political parties within the nation. Nearly everyone in the political system was somehow related to Ali. This led to the Tunisian government being called the family. Joel Bainan, a Middle East scholar, reports 3,000 protests in Egypt in the last 10 years. This is an obvious sign of citizens' discontent under Mubarak's regime. The government's concern for unemployment disappeared as well as for poverty. There was also excessive corruption in the economic system. Many seemingly normal purchases were backed by under-the-table supplementary payments. At its core, Egypt was formerly an autocracy. The people of Egypt began to feel that Mubarak was out of touch from the needs of the Egyptian people, motivating the Egyptians to act. The younger generations of Egypt sparked the revolutions. Libya collapsed into a civil war. Scarcity and corruption resulted in minimal trust everywhere. Libya resembled a old-fashioned fascism banning private enterprise and freedom of expression. The country was less perfect than the image it portrayed. From dirty streets to corrupted politicians, the revolutions in Libya began with ragtag bands of armed rebels. Even before the restricted internet access of the Arab Spring, the government owned and operated every mode of communication such as television and news Papers, meaning that only government approved stories were released. They also blocked certain websites that reported on international affairs, falsely informing citizens of what was going on in the outside world. In all three countries, social media was used to coordinate protests and express opinions. The new use of social media was essential in letting the outside world follow the events of the protests and encourage the public to spread the news of recent uprisings and oppressions. On January 25th of 2011, an Egyptian American news producer wrote, the police guard in Tahrir Square says, I'm just following orders, doing my job. Otherwise, I'd be with the prote protesters too. Hashtag January 25th, hashtag Egypt. Within minutes, that tweet had been retweeted by several influential journalists. This reiterates how quickly information spreads over the internet. Iranian Twitter activist Erasmus has created a Google Maps mashup to document protesters' Twitter reports during the Libyan anti-government uprising. After only four hours of protesting, independent reporters began posting tweets of gunshots, bloodshed, killings, mercenary sightings, helicopter slayings, and electricity disconnections. Al Jazeera is reporting that another 250 people have been killed on Monday alone. Despite a media blackout, reporters are emerging on Al Jazeera and elsewhere that fighter jets and helicopters are attacking demonstrators in Tripoli and Benghazi. Websites like Facebook, Twitter and news provider Al Jazeera have been intermittently blocked and on February 18th internet access in the country was blocked entirely. Six hours later the web was mostly black. The Libyan government began running tests on their newly constructed firewall which ultimately led to a mass blackout of the nation's internet, just like in Egypt. The internet was a support for activists and a threat to the government. The internet footprint disappeared during the Arab Spring. Several applied networking research prize winners researched the cause of this internet disconnect and discovered that the Egyptian and Libyan governments used malware to achieve their goals. 23 million internet users out of 80 million citizens were cut off in Egypt between January 27th 2011 until February 2nd. When the internet first went out, the stock exchange remained active, meaning the government did not want to interfere with the economy during this time. However, Libya was different. So why is this inter internet censorship so important to us? Because the internet is a mode of communication and a forum for freedom of expression. The internet plays a vital role in the political system, either through allowing the freedom of expression of the system in place or to communicate with the government to give feedback on the system. 
The United Nations Declaration of Human Rights says in Article 19 that everyone has the right to a freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media regardless of frontiers. Article 20 gives the right to freedom of peaceful assembly. This picture is the message that popped up on 23 million people's Twitter feeds after six days while Egypt and Libya's internet was cut off. Hillary Clinton declared internet freedom to be a new priority in foreign policy. She revealed in a speech that an American company provided Egypt with the intelligence to spy on its citizens. She contradicted herself by saying that it was not okay in the Middle East, but made no mention of the NSA spying. All three countries have held free democratic elections since the Arab Spring. However, Libya and Tunisia are still corrupt. Thank you for your time and attention to our presentation.